Cyber Sigilism is one of the many design trends that are currently trending in the streetwear scene right now. Its combination of cybernetic elements with mystical sigils is what makes this style really unique. So today I'm going to show you how to do that for your own clothing brand. Let's go. Yo, what's good? It's your boy Dixon from Intuitive Designs. All right, there are two ways you can do this, guys. You can download my Cyber Sigilism pack with all the effects already added. Link in the description below. Or you can hand draw the elements yourself. But don't worry, guys. I'm going to show you how it's done anyway. And I suck at hand drawing too, but even I can do it. So, you know, it really isn't as hard as you think. So grab a pen and paper. It doesn't have to be, you know, any specific kind of marker pen. Anything works really. And then just go to Instagram, look up the hashtag cyber sigilism, find the reference that you like, and then just eyeball it and start sketching. Now, the key is to keep the lines nice and thin. You don't want it to be too thick. Otherwise it will start to look tacky. Another thing is you don't want to just copy the reference one to one. For example, I'm referencing this section right here and then I'm going to stop and go find another one and then start sketching that as well. Now this way your elements will look somewhat original so you don't have to worry too much about copyrights. So yeah. Also guys, don't worry too much about messing up. We can always fix that in Photoshop, which I'll show you guys later on. So keep doing this a few more times or until you're satisfied and then just take a photo of it using your phone and then send it to your computer and we'll start editing on Photoshop. Right, so now Photoshop, I'm gonna start with this one right here. Now we'll be using the pen tool to basically just trace our sketches. If you're not familiar with how it works, I'm gonna show you anyway. So hit P on your keyboard to activate the pen tool or just click right here make sure the shape is selected black color for the fill and none for the stroke and then just click on your sketch to create a starting point and then create a second one but don't let go of your left click hold it and drag it to match the curve of your sketch and then moving on with the third one same thing but hold the option key on your keyboard click on it to create this sharp turn for the fourth point and that's basically it guys just keep doing the same few steps until you go back to the starting point now you're gonna want to keep in mind to make sure that you know the lines are as thin as possible to maintain the cyber sigilism aesthetic um, you can be as precise as possible to your sketch or you can choose to ignore certain sections that you don't like so now I'm tracing the hollow section inside of the shape so that I can delete it from the original shape. So do this a few more times, trace all the elements that you like and we'll combine them later to create one full sigilism design. All right guys, now that's done, we can start combining them to create one big sigil. Here's the part where you can size them up or down or even rotate them to match your taste. In my case, I feel like mine looks, you know, too elongated at the moment, but uh, I don't want to spend too much time fixing it for the sake of the tutorial. But yeah, now you can keep mirroring it to see how it looks. Another thing that you can do is group all the elements, Command T, right click and select Distort to alter the look of the element. After we're happy with our design, we can now start adding details inside the sigils to really sell the aesthetic, kind of like the cherry on top. So go to the effects button, select color overlay, set the color to neutral gray, which is 8B, 8B, 8B for the hex code. After that, add bevel and emboss. Let me reset it to default select inner bevel for style smooth for technique 300 for depth 50 for size and lastly for glass contour select this one now the result may shift differently depending on your sigil so you can of course play with the setting to find out what works for you you know what let me alter this real quick i just couldn't help it guys 
Next, we'll go to a filter gallery. But before that, make sure your brush colors are set to default black and white. Then go to filter, filter gallery. Now the first filter will be the grain and it's under the texture folder. Select enlarge for the grain type. Leave the settings for now. Add a second filter, which is the stamp and it's under the sketch folder. Set the light dark balance to 20, leave the smoothness to five. And then now you can start playing with both the settings for better result. In my case, I've set mine to 80 for the intensity and 50 for the contrast. And there you go. Now we have the sigils with the effects applied, ready to turn it into a shirt design. You can command J to copy it, flip it horizontally to see how it looks for now. So guys, the shirt design style is pretty basic. I don't want to say generic, but um, essentially this is how it all looks. Now, if you want a more complex tutorial of it, let me know in the comments below. If you want to see part two, where I do even more advanced technique to do the cyber sigilism aesthetic. But yeah, size is just like usual, a tool. After that, drag and drop your sigil to the shirt design file. After that, I'm gonna hit Command I to invert the color. Since the background is black now, unlike the previous one where it was white. After that, convert to Smart Object. Let's rename the layer to one. Now for the header, I've decided to use the font Artburn. It, it's a serif font with the sharp edges that match the edgy look of cyber sigilism. Now I'm just gonna type in something random like Anima. Now bring back the sigil drag it to the right side, hit command T, and then just size it down until you see the pink line in the middle. And why I think it looks better if I turn it 180 degrees, so let's do that. Next, command J to copy the sigil layer. Let's rename it to two, flip it horizontally, and then just drag it to the left side until it looks perfectly mirrored. So far, it's looking pretty good already. Um, let me size up the font a bit so that the proportions are even throughout the design. Now for the subtext, we're gonna go with the font Andel or Andale Mono. I really don't know how to pronounce that correctly. And yeah, let's set the size to 16. What you're gonna do is type something futuristic like future proof and then some random numbers below it. Now align it to the right then put it somewhere over here. Now I'm gonna do the same thing to the right. So command J to copy and then align it to the left and then type again, something random futuristic. After that, I'm gonna copy another one. This time I'm gonna center the text alignment and then I'm gonna add some pluses now. Now guys, these small elements will really sell the cybernetic look, even though they're really small and kind of secondary in element, but they make a huge difference. So yeah, don't neglect them. Final step is I'm gonna copy the subtext again, center alignment, and then change the text to my brand name and the year. We're pretty much done now, but to wrap it all up, I'm just gonna add this icon from my streetwear pack to the bottom section here. And now we're done. Let me show you guys the full mock-up. That's all for today, guys. Let me know in the comments below if you want a part two of this tutorial where I explore even more complex shared designs. Subscribe if you're new so you don't miss out on my uploads. See you on the next one.